Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Liam Walken, and today we're going to be renovating this five-piece master bathroom. This was the last project that needed to be done in this house, so the homeowners were really excited for it. They put a whole lot of time and effort into the design aspect, so it was really exciting to see everything come together at the end and have their vision come to life. Before starting with the demo, there's a few things I like to think about. The first being floor protection, and then a means of disposal, dust prevention, and pressurized water lines. So with floor protection, I like to buy some RAM board, tape it all down from the means of entry of the house to the work area. In terms of disposal, my go-to is renting a waste bin. For a project of this size, I went with a 14-yard bin. Of course, if you have a trailer or a truck, you can haul it off to the dump yourself, especially if you have a smaller project. And then with dust prevention, that is through means of a dust extractor running as we're doing this and sealing off any doors that are available to us, really just trying to minimize where this dust can get to and blocking any floor registers in the area as well. And finally, in terms of supply lines, uh, when it comes to water, shut off the main water supply to the house, drain the lines, and then start ripping things apart. And once we have access to the water lines, we cut them back if needed and then cap them with some temporary shark bite end caps. If you have a bathroom that is similar to this one, in which you have a giant soaker tub and a tiny little closed-in shower, you may want to consider playing around with the floor plan before going about and starting the renovation. So anytime I run into a bathroom like this where I visit a client's home and I see these features, I like to draw them up a little design idea so they can get a feel for the space and just kind of play around, get an idea of their project and what the potential is. This here is a program called SketchUp, which you can get for free. And as you can see, you can just kind of play around with it. After an hour or two, you can figure it out and drop some really simple designs like what you're seeing here. Using the three foot pry bar to just demolish these floors, got really lucky here as there were very few staples adhering the lath into the subfloor. So this floor just came right on up. Sebastian here cutting open the floor of the shower area, that way we can recess the shower pan, get that curbless shower going. And on the left you can see the dust extractor working, just pumping into a bag. can also pour it outside at some points if we choose to. With this project they are doing heated floors, and more specifically doing heated floors in the shower as well. So because of this, I have to run three half inch ENT conduits down from the box cutout, which is a four by four deep box with a plaster ring on it. I got a circuit ran to it. And then my conduits go down right to the floor where I cut out the bottom plate. That way I can get the conduits right at the bottom of the subfloor there. And in this case, we have three conduits because one is gonna house the sensing probes and the other two conduits are both gonna have their own heating cable. One for the general floors and then one for the shower heated floors. Now the tub is going to be changing, going to a smaller freestanding tub, so the drain location had to be changed. On top of this, we had to get some water lines over for the tub filler. So just opening everything up so we have access, running our new drain line, getting the appropriate slope, getting our trap in there. And then just slightly altering the shower drain as well to get it centered with the new 38 inch by 60 inch curdy pan. For the tub filler, we're going with a wall mount, and this is an exterior wall. You never want to run your pressurized water lines in an exterior wall, but in this case, we went ahead and did it. I'm not advising anybody to do this. You should not. However, in this case, what we did is we had a two by six framed wall. So we're able to get full insulation behind these water lines by keeping them right up to the front. As well as that, we're using PEX and then we insulated the PEX lines themselves as well. Taking the old shower lines here and just cutting them back and capping them, soldering on some copper caps here, and then going a little further down the line and doing the same thing, but with a PEX adapter, soldering those on. We can tee off to both the shower and to the tub with some new PEX, and that's how we're supplying both of those fixtures. Then once we have all of that ran, you can see those insulated PEX lines just at the uh, right hand side there. Go ahead, close up the subfloor in this area, gluing and screwing it down. Thank you. 
very standard stuff for recessing our shower pan here and I do have a video on this if you want to check it out in more detail. But essentially we're just taking these 2x4s, gluing and screwing them down 5 eighths of an inch as we're using 5 eighths plywood here. If you're in the states you're more likely to be using 3 quarter. And then this way our plywood is flush with the tops of those joists and we can save on the amount of buildup that we have for the rest of the bathroom floor to get our shower pan fully flush with the rest of the bathroom here. And as you can see, we're putting down more plywood on the rest of the bathroom floor. And we had to use a larger size than standard here. I believe this is 5 8 plywood that we're building up the entire bathroom with. And the reason being is that because we are doing a heated floor in the shower, the Ditra mat that we're going to be putting on top of our shower pan builds it up an extra quarter inch. So because of that, we have to adjust the rest of the floor accordingly. And then we can start drywalling. Now this is half inch green board and I am putting it on the ceiling. So anytime I do this, just really put a whole ton of drywall screws into it to make sure that it isn't going anywhere. And same thing with any walls that are getting tiles on them, just go ahead and, and put in a whole bunch of screws. It's one, you don't have to worry about mudding them, making it look nice. And two, look, that wall's gonna have a lot of weight on it. Drywall screws are cheap. Just, it doesn't hurt to put a few extra in. This is the Ditra Heat Peel and Stick, my favorite product to install just because of how easy and quick it is and how fun it makes the bathroom look. Uh, I really hope that they come out with a non-Ditra Heat, just the regular Ditra Peel and Stick, but really you just want to make sure your subfloor is really clean, so go ahead and vacuum. Give it a very damp sponge kind of rub down, let that all dry up as we want it to be dry before we put the Peel and Stick down, and then just tamp it all down, let it set up. And it really has a nice tight bond despite being just a peel and stick. Then I just go around with a sharpie and outline everywhere that I can't run my heating cable as we do need to keep it a certain distance away from certain fixtures and we want to avoid running it underneath things like a tub or a vanity. Using the Curdy membrane system here for the waterproofing. And my best tip for this is using their all set thin set. I don't use this thin set anywhere else, not for tiling or anything because it is very expensive. Uh, but for the waterproofing system, I do highly recommend it. I got their trowel as well, which uh, I found helped a lot. It got better coverage than the regular V-notch trowel I was using before this. Just making sure to wet down the substrate so it doesn't pull all the moisture out of the thin set as we're installing this. And as you can see, I did put a little piece of Dietra below the collar to get that height adjusted as you can see now, we're putting more Dietra on the top of the shower pan here. And instead of using the peel and stick, I am thin setting it down as it is going in the shower. And then once that's in, you can see I can run my heating cable now. And this is the dedicated heating cable specifically for the shower. So I ran that into the shower and then once that's embedded everywhere, I can actually take some more curdy membrane and fully put it over all of this Dietra to make sure that my shower is nice and waterproof. I also take some extra curdy band and just waterproof well outside of the shower area as well as I do anytime I have a curbless shower just to be sure give it that extra insurance. This is an island tub drain, beautiful system. You're just taking some ABS or PVC, whatever you're using, gluing it down into your trap. And then later on, you can drop the tail piece off of the tub right into it. When it comes to tiling, I'm choosing to do my floor here. And that is because it is a curbless shower with a smaller tile in the shower pan itself. In this bathroom, we're doing a river stone. So by finishing the shower floor, I get those nice straight edges established. And that way, when it comes time to tiling the floor, it becomes really, really easy. In fact, I didn't have to make a single cut in the shower pan as it is just a river stone. 
so we're able to just lay it all down nice and neat. With a tile this size, this is 24 inch by 24 inch, I personally like to trial out the back of my tiles instead and back under the floor. I just find it to be a little cleaner this way, but there's no wrong way to do it if you prefer to trial the floor, by all means. And this is a porcelain tile with that terrazzo look to it, which really, really worked nicely with the rest of their finishings. And you can see on the right side, we have the Aria vent flush mount. And I did have to adjust the location of the floor register a bit. So I just cut out the subfloor with the multi-tool, moved it over about half an inch. And that way the edge of the vent is right on that grout line. So it looks really, really clean. It's a small detail, but one that I think makes a big impact. With the river stone, I actually set them in one by one, taking them off of the mesh sheets that they came with. I'd seen some people do this, and the reasons being that you can get a cleaner look with them. When you have them on the mesh sheet, when you lay the sheets next to each other, sometimes it's really hard to get them to line up properly. And also, you can get them really clean around the perimeter of that drain there, as well as the rest of the floor tile. By laying them in one by one, we're able to really get some customizability with it and just have a really, really seamless look with each stone. It takes a considerable amount more time to do it this way, but in the end, it's kind of fun, a little bit satisfying to watch it here. And then taking an old toothbrush and cleaning out any of the grout lines where some thin set had bled through while it's still wet, it's just easier before it dries up. With the Ari event, I personally just pack some thin set behind it and squeeze it until the tile is flush with the sides, the black trim there. With the left wall complete, we can adjust our laser and shoot it through that four foot grout line there. This way, the bottom of our niche will run through that grout line. And because we made a custom 24 inch niche, which I'll make a little video on at some point, we're able to have both the left, right, and bottom of this niche border a factory edge of each tile. And that's gonna result in a really clean square look. And you can see we got that low voltage wire for the LED lights connecting to the LED lights themselves. And then we can put our niche in, which we tiled. We got the back of it tiled previously, and then we just waterproof it. And that's gonna make a really quick installation. Anytime I have a niche that has a full tile above it, I like to take some clamps and reverse them just to support it as we continue on with the tiling. And by the time we're done and we have all those wedges locked in, generally we can then remove those clamps and not have to worry about that tile sliding down at all. This way we can tile that niche in the same day and just get all the tiling done at once. You can see here we got the gold trim going in to match with the rest of the fixtures, getting that bottom piece just pitched ever so slightly outwards and really making use of these little red wedges to get perfect grout lines and get the miters on those trim pieces really, really tight. For the grout, we went with Laticrete's Mink, just a light gray and matched with the tile really nice, both the Riverstone as well as the Porcelain Terrazzo kind of tile that we had for the walls in the general bathroom floor. Now, grouting can be one of those things where it's really easy to mess up. If you need to mix your grout like the one we're using here, you want to make sure not to make it too thick or too thin. You also want to be sure not to let it sit too long because the haze can be really difficult to get rid of. So what I would recommend if you haven't done this before is just do one wall to begin with. Uh, take it slow. Don't mix up too much grout if this is your first time and be patient. And even worst case scenario, if you do leave a little haze behind, you can always get a product off the, the shelves there to help get rid of it. It's just going to take some elbow grease.
This is the thermostat for the floor heat. Now, because we have two different heating cables, both get ran onto the same terminals. The whites from both getting under one of the terminals for the load side and the blacks going under the other terminal for the load side. And then our line side wires, that's the Romex getting on the line terminals. The wallpaper was actually installed by the homeowners themselves who came in this morning. Really pleasantly surprised to see it all done and done really well actually. And it worked really nicely with the rest of the finishings they chose. So it was really cool to just have that done. And then installing this crown molding as it was existing in the bathroom. So we just put a return on that one side where it touches the kind of the shower area there. And then glued and brad nailed it up into the walls and the ceiling. We got some shiplap going in, but we just wanted to do this one corner first before getting the vanity in because we wouldn't be able to brad nail it in once the vanity was in place. And getting this vanity in, getting the countertop on this way, we wanted the top of our shiplap to run alongside the top of the backsplash for the vanity, hence why we're getting it in at this point. Now we did measure everything of course, but there's nothing as precise as a laser line ran along the top of the backsplash, so that's what we did. And then just siliconing both the countertop and the backsplash down, and we have these undermount sinks going in. So we did just apply a nice thick bead alongside the top. We got our clamps, which you can see, the one on the 2x4 and then the bottom of the clamps on the sink. And then on top of this, the countertop did come with some clips to go on the underside to help hold those sinks in place. With the shiplap here, we have both some adhesive going on the back of it as it is being installed vertically, so we won't be able to hit the studs otherwise. So with the glue, we put that on each piece and then also getting some brad nails along the tongue of each piece as well. For these corners here, we went ahead and gave them a bevel and then used the two-part glue to adhere them together before installing it as one piece. And you can see that we have a laser line to establish where the top of our shiplap needs to be ran and then the bottoms of which we don't really concern ourselves over the height as we're going to cover that all up with some baseboard. For the wall sconces, we have them going on the sides of the mirrors as opposed to above. And I love this look. The problem with it is it's really hard to do because most vanities want to be mounted in a corner of the room. So with this one, we did actually get a bit of a gap between that one wall and the vanity, as this is what the homeowner wanted, and I really loved this decision. I think the side sconces look really clean. Taking out the temporary brass nipples we had in the drop ears for our fixtures in the shower here. And anytime I'm installing fixtures, I use a combination of both Teflon and pipe dope to make sure we have a leak free connection. Got these beautiful three piece faucets going in once again in gold. And when it comes to gold, I think it's something that's really hard to pull off. It can oftentimes look really tacky, but I got to give it to the homeowners here. With all of their choices, I found that it just flowed nicely with everything else in this bathroom. Sealing both the grout and the river stone here. So it is a natural stone. It needs to be sealed. Just using a spray bottle to do this and then giving it a good wipe as well. For the hardware for this vanity, had to put it in ourselves, so just took some painter's tape, marked everything nice and precisely, pre-drilled all the holes, and then mounted all the hardware. And when it comes to towel bars or anything of the like, using these easy anchors to go into the wall. 
They're my preference. Anytime you get fixtures and they come with those stupid little plastic wall plugs, just throw them away. They're garbage. Don't use them. With the toilet here, I did have to build up the flange, just used a kit because of the new floor height, and I actually made a mistake here. I had a complete oversight in regards to that water line. Originally, the client wanted a skirted toilet, but because of the existing location for that line, it would not work. So, because I failed to notice this early on, I went ahead and bought them a new toilet and bought the old toilet off them as well, just to make things right on my end. Uh, Look, we all make mistakes and this was mine. You just have to learn from this experience and share it with you guys. So if you're planning on getting a skirted toilet, double check your waterline location because when they come out of the floor like that, the base of skirted toilets are often much wider. So you need to make sure that it will work. This is just a tailpiece that came with that island tub drain kit. So we attach it to the drain of the tub here, apply a silicone lubricant to it, and then it literally just drops right into this drain. It has some o-rings on it to secure it and then the only thing left is to apply a nice bead of silicone along the base of it to adhere it to the floor and stop it from being able to move And there we have it. This one was a lot of fun to do. As you can see, the homeowners had fantastic taste, really did an amazing job of putting this whole thing together. It was really nice to do something outside of the usual white and gray color palette. So this one was really fun. If you are located in the Mississauga or surrounding areas, my contact information is down below. And all in, this project cost about 23,000 US or 30,000 Canadian and took 12 days to complete. And here is a little more in-depth look at where that cost came from. Uh, just one thing to address here because I do get some questions about this. In terms of the glass work, I do subcontract that out. So I'll put a link to my subcontractor that I use for this work. And you can pause this, look over this list if you're interested in kind of the, the breakdown here. And here is some more footage. I'll let this play of just the after shots. If you did enjoy this video, if I may ask you to maybe leave a like, dislike, comment, subscribe, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And other than that, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching.